With the recent release of Wave 5 of the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Booster Course Pass, many are starting to speculate and predict what the final 8 tracks and seemingly two new characters will be in the final wave of the Booster Course Pass, Wave 6. I know it's easy to do with the Prefects data mine that's out there, but what if I told you that things just got complicated with that? The release of Wave 5 has really thrown a curve into many people's predictions for Wave 6, including my own. What do I mean by this? Well, Moonview Highway's code was underscore 63, meaning it was initially planned for the third track in Wave 6, which was actually a blank spot in the prefix data mine that came out after Wave 1's release. Historically, these blank spots were always new Nitro tracks, like Yoshi's Island in Wave 4 and Squeaky Clean Sprint in Wave 5. This means that Moonview Highway very likely scrapped a Nitro track, and now only two Nitro tracks are coming in Wave 6, instead of the initial data mined 3. This leaves the door open for one retro track that could return from any previous Mario Kart installment. However, I have a pretty good idea of what installment of Mario Kart game this retro track is from due to the history of the previously released waves. Hey internet, I'm Mike Bryce, and in this video, I'm going to be sharing my predictions and speculations for Wave 6 of the Booster Course Pass. Before I get started, Please note that although some of these predictions are supported by seemingly proven facts, they are in no way official, and nothing will be until Nintendo drops the Wave 6 trailer. If you agree or disagree with anything I say in this video, let me know in the comments below as I love discussing all things Mario Kart. Also, if you like what you see here today, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe as we are currently on the path to 2,000 subscribers. Your support to the channel is much appreciated and does not go unnoticed. Anyways, with that out of the way, let's get into the predictions. Now before I go over my actual predictions for Wave 6, I want to go over my dream lineup of what Wave 6 would be if I was put in total control of everything regarding Wave 6. I'm not going to spend too much time going over my dream lineup because it doesn't really matter and it isn't really the point of this video, but for fun, I just want to state what they are. Starting off with the Acorn Cup, we have Figure 8 Circuit, Luigi Circuit, Peach Circuit, and Figure 8 Circuit R. Starting off with the Acorn Cup, we have Romavante from Mario Kart Tour, Toad's Factory from Mario Kart Wii, Airship Fortress from Mario Kart DS, and Piranha Plant Cove from Mario Kart Tour. But of course, it would be considered a brand new track. Going over to the Spiny Cup, we have Super Nintendo World, which would be a brand new track based on, well, Super Nintendo World. I just think this would be a really cool idea for a racetrack, and would be a good way to promote the Super Nintendo World theme park. The second track I have is DK Mountain from Mario Kart Double Dash, the third being Bowser's Castle from Mario Kart 64, and ending off Wave 6 would be a brand new Rainbow Road. I don't really know how I would want this new Rainbow Road to be laid out or anything like that, but I just think it would be really cool to see a brand new Rainbow Road Nitro track, as we haven't gotten one since the original 8 version, which was released almost 10 years ago. As for characters, I could pretty much just say the entire cast from Mario Kart Tour, but I'm gonna scale it back a bit and only pick two, being Diddy Kong and Rob the Robot, returning from Mario Kart DS. The reason I chose Rob is because he's definitely my favorite character to play as in Mario Kart DS, as he was a total oddball choice to pick, but that's the thing that made him so unique. And besides, he would be placed in the bottom row, which seems to be reserved for non-Mario characters, so it would be the perfect fit. I also think it would be a really cool idea if we could see some of the costumes return from Mario Kart Tour. These give the characters so much more personality, and I would think it would be an easy thing to implement. Anyways, that's all for my dream lineup, so let's go on to my actual predictions. Starting off with the first track of the Acorn Cup, things are already getting controversial. As the track I think we're going to see here is one that hasn't officially been announced yet, being the Madrid theme course that I'm going to nickname Madrid Mile. There has been data mined information for a while now that highly suggests that we're going to see a course themed on Madrid, Spain. 
and I think it would make a lot of sense to see a track based on Madrid, as there's a lot they could do with this track to make it stand out from other city-themed tracks in the game, by showing the beautiful city streets, museums, and local landmarks, such as driving through the La Perita de Acala and around the Cybalus Fountain. Also, I'm really sorry, I probably just butchered those names so badly, so I apologize to anybody who's from Madrid. I think a track like this would benefit from taking place during the day, to properly showcase Madrid's beautiful architecture. As for a layout, I don't really know how this track would be laid out, and that's not really up to me to decide, and I'm not going to try to speculate a possible layout, so I'm just going to leave this one here. The second track of the Acorn Cup is the previously mentioned retro track that I think is going to be replacing one of the nitro tracks in Wave 6. Now before I announce the actual track, I just want to put out there that every wave so far has had a GBA track, and it seems like Nintendo really wants to showcase these tracks. As we can pretty much guarantee that this track is going to be returning from Mario Kart Tour, let's take a look at the GBA tracks that have appeared in Mario Kart Tour that are currently not in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. These tracks include Peach Circuit, Bowser's Castle 1, Bowser's Castle 2, Luigi Circuit, Cheap Cheap Island, Yoshi Desert, Bowser's Castle 3, and Bowser's Castle 4. Now I'm going to be excluding the Bowser's Castle tracks, and it will make sense a little bit later in the video, so that pretty much just leaves us with Peach Circuit, Luigi Circuit, Cheap Cheap Island, and Yoshi Desert. I really don't think that Peach Circuit is very likely, because it's too similar to the Mario Circuit tracks, and it's just a little bit too easy for the second track in a cup. Luigi Circuit is a track that I did consider could possibly be in this spot. As I know it is a circuit track, I feel like it is different enough with the aesthetic and the rain that's going on. But once again, it is just a circuit track, and I think we do have enough in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe at this point, so I don't think it's going to be Luigi Circuit either. So that pretty much just leaves us with Cheap Cheap Island and Yoshi Desert. In the end, I decided to go with Yoshi Desert, as I think it's just overall a more interesting track than Cheap Cheap Island. Yoshi Desert perfectly fits the difficulty for the second track in the cup. Now I know we did just get a desert themed track with Sunset Wilds in Wave 5 and Calamari Desert in Wave 2. But I think that Yoshi's Desert is different enough aesthetically to stand out, with the pyramids in the background, the Yoshi Sphinx, and even just the lighting of this track is different, being a lot brighter than the other desert tracks in the game. Now I know a lot of people probably won't be happy with this pick, and to be perfectly honest, Yoshi Desert wouldn't be an initial pick of mine if I could choose any 8 tracks to return, but I do want to be realistic since every other wave has had a GBA track, so that's why I'm putting Yoshi Desert as the second track of the Acorn Cup. The third track of the Acorn Cup I think we'll see is DK Mountain from Mario Kart Double Dash. Of course its inclusion in Mario Kart Tour gives it a major edge over the other possible GCN tracks. The other two we could potentially see in this wave are Mushroom Bridge and Dino Dino Jungle due to them being in tour as well. With Moonview Highway's release in Wave 5, I don't think we're going to see another traffic track so soon, and Dino Dino Jungle just isn't as iconic as DK Mountain. Now, the prefix data mine leak does have two double dash tracks set for this wave, but to be honest, I think Nintendo is going to scrap one of these just like they did with one of the new Nitro tracks in this wave. Of course, this is just speculation, but something deep down is just telling me that we're only going to see one GCN track in this wave, as Nintendo hasn't seemed very interested in having these tracks return, as only two have returned so far in the entire Booster Course Pass, being Waluigi Stadium in Wave 4, and Daisy Cruiser in Wave 5. The third track of this cup is the perfect spot for DK Mountain, as the difficulty of this track is that of a third or fourth track. DK Mountain already has spots set up with half pipes, thanks to the Mario Kart Wii and Tour versions, so it would be a great track to add to utilize that mechanic even more. The fourth and final track of the Acorn Cup will most likely be one of the new tracks, so I'm giving this spot to Piranha Plant Cove. Piranha Plant Cove has three variants in Mario Kart Tour already, so this track will more than likely be a section track, taking elements of each version's roots in mind. Most section tracks are either the first or the last in each cup, and as we know that each cup will start with a Tour City track, this track can really only go in the last slot of a cup. 
this could be the final track of the Spiny Cup, but like many, I think Nintendo has something else in mind for that slot. So Piranha Plant Cove will be rounding out the Acorn Cup. Moving over to the Spiny Cup, the first track should be no surprise, as it's the only remaining city track in Mario Kart Tour left, Realm of Auntie. I don't have too much to say about this track. It's currently the newest city track in Mario Kart Tour, and one of the best at that. The nighttime setting works well for this track, and I look forward to seeing other variants of this track whenever they release in Mario Kart Tour or the Booster Course Pass, as currently we only have one variant available in Mario Kart Tour. The second track of the Spiny Cup, I believe, is going to be the final new Nitro track, being Piranha Plant Pipeline. This track was just added to Tour in the Pipe Tour, and I honestly don't know how I feel about it. It has the same idea as Piranha Plant Slide, having you race through warp pipes, but instead of Piranha Plant Slide's one warp pipe, this one has multiple that you can race through. I'm placing this in the second spot because I think Nintendo is setting up something special for the third and fourth tracks for this cup, so Piranha Plant Pipeline is almost forced to go here. Plus, I don't think Nintendo would put two Piranha Plant named tracks in the same cup, and since Piranha Plant Cove is suited for the last track in a cup, Piranha Plant Pipeline's only available spot is here, since the first track is always reserved for a city track. The third track of this cup may be a bit controversial, but not for what this track is, but for having its placement be so low in a cup. But here I'm placing Bowser Castle 3 from Super Mario Kart. We know that a Super Mario Kart track is likely to be in this wave, due to the one that was supposed to be in wave 5 seemingly being replaced. The same thing happened with Waluigi Stadium. It was supposed to be in wave 3, but was instead pushed back to wave 4. So that's what I think is going on here with Bowser Castle 3. This track got a huge glow up in Mario Kart Tour recently. Large stretches of this course are now angled vertically, including segments of lava. This course now features more walls, pillars, ramps, and lava geysers that erupt from the lava. This track has gotten the biggest overhaul from any other Super Mario Kart track, which makes me believe the reason is, is because they plan on adding this track to the booster course pass. Now people may take issue with this being the third track in the cup, due to it maybe not offering the same difficulty one may expect from a third track. But remember when I said Nintendo may be planning something special here? Well, let me explain by showcasing the final track of not only the Spiny Cup, but the final track of the DLC itself, Wii Rainbow Road. We know that we are most likely getting a Wii track here, so Rainbow Road just makes the most sense, especially as the last course of the entire DLC. Although many are not happy with the tour version of this track, mostly because they turned this track into a one-lap section track, I believe Nintendo will revert this track back to three laps. The tour version was only shortened to keep up with the pacing of that game due to it being a mobile game, and people playing mobile games don't usually have as much time to game, so Nintendo wanted to make these tracks shorter. Now the reason this is so special as I mentioned before, is because if this is the final placement of these tracks, then we're going to get a Bowser Castle track followed by a Rainbow Road which would be a nod to every special cop in the Mario Kart series, minus Super Mario Kart. Although some don't want to see a fifth Rainbow Road added to the game, Wii Rainbow Road just makes the most sense to end the DLC with. So if we look back to the prefix data mine, we'll see that the courses I predicted are not in the same order as the leak, such as the Double Dash track not being the second track of the Acorn Cup. It's good to keep in mind that the game each track is from is the important thing in the leak, not the placements. Ever since Wave 3, the tracks have been moved around in each wave, but for the most part, the data mined game they're from has been correct. Take Wave 5 for example. The final tracks of the Feather and Cherry Cup were swapped, so the Feather Cup ended with the new track, and the Cherry Cup ended with a Tour City track. Their placements may have been swapped, but the games they are from still had the correctly data mined number of tracks in the wave, with Tour still having three tracks represented. So keep that in mind when creating your own list or reviewing mine. Let's talk about the characters I think Nintendo will add to this wave. I think we're going to get two new characters in this final wave, as there are only two blank spots left on the character select screen. As Nintendo seems to only be adding characters that have been playable in previous Mario Kart installments, including Mario Kart Tour, that leaves us with the possibilities of Donkey Kong Jr., Paratroopa, Diddy Kong, Rob, Funky Kong, Honey Queen, Peachette, Pauline, Hammer Bro, Boomerang Bro, Fire Bro, Ice Bro, Monty Mole, Dixie Kong, 
Captain Toad, Nabbit, King Babom, Charge and Chuck, and Poochie. Out of this big cast of characters, there are two that I think stand out above the rest. The first of these characters is Diddy Kong. Diddy has appeared in three previous Mario Kart games, being Double Dash, Wii, and Tour. His omission from Mario Kart 8 and Mario Kart 8 Deluxe was mind-boggling, as Diddy has been a mainstay Mario spin-off character for many years. Diddy Kong seems to be the fans' frontrunner to return, and I think Wave 6 is the perfect time for that, especially if DK Mountain returns as well. The second character I think we'll get is Pauline. Pauline made her debut as one of the initial characters available when Mario Kart 2 were released. After her resurrection in Super Mario Odyssey, Pauline has been appearing in almost every Mario spin-off title, including Tennis, Golf, and Strikers. She has now become a fan-favorite character, much to the akin of Rosalina after her appearance in the Galaxy games, so I will be shooketh if we don't see Pauline added in Wave 6. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed what you saw here today, be sure to hit the like, smash that subscribe, and ring the bell to get notified when I upload future videos. Once again, I'm Mike Bryce, and I will see you in the next one.